Hello guys and welcome in the 17th episode. In today's episode we will implement additional feature to our game which has been requested by one of you. Uh, so this, this is going to be the game, uh, game scoreboard history, really the game history. So as you see on the screen I have additional icon which represented the, the game history. If I start the game now I have a game history screen and I have the latest uh, games which I played displayed here. So we can have a three different modes. We can have a, the same as in the game. We can have a short game, survival, or the time trail. So recently I played the Europe, and I guessed one flag out of 51. So if I play the game again, let's say I'm going to play the North America, and I will choose uh, short game this time. So as you see, I need to go through all of them. Maybe I'll be lucky enough to guess even one. Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, so we have a 3 out of 10. So if I go back to the history, you see I played the no no North America and I guessed 3 out of 13 questions. Okay. So this is how the game history will work. Currently will be stored the 6 records or the records will be stored in our data file. So every time you're going back to the game, you will not lose this history, it will be always there. So as I push new game on the top, the last game which been previously there has been deleted. So every new game will be coming on the top and the last game will be will be deleted. Okay, you can change the number of the records if you like, but you will have to manipulate these graphics. Uh, so in order to get these graphics, please go to the to my website. I will put the link in the description and download again the, the asset pack for this tutorial. So you will have additional folder called history in it. So just copy paste this folder and this is all graphics you really need for this uh, for this uh, history screen. And uh, let's start implementing it. Okay, so let's open our project. And first of all, let's add the additional button button to our to our screen. So I will just um, go to the canvas and then right click on the canvas UI button. And I will call it game history. Okay. So once you imported, um, once you imported all of the graphics, you will have the uh, under the sprite the history. I actually didn't import it, so I will do it just now. Okay. So I will go to the sprites. I will right click in the in the in the in the project and then show in the explorer. Okay, now I will copy the history folder from the package. If you don't have it, please download it again from the, from my website. So we will have all of the packages. And I will go under the resource sprites. I will just paste this folder in. So you should have all of the graphics. Okay, once you then you can close this window. And then Unity should import everything. Okay, and we should have uh, the game history now. So I have all of the graphics in. So if I change the view, okay, let's click on our game history button and let's remove the text. And then let's click it again and then let's apply uh, our source image. So I will choose the history menu button, graphics and then drag and drop into the source image. Okay, then I will change the width and the height of this button to be 100 and 100. And now I will need to change uh, the position of the rest of the buttons. So I'll just move play button up a bit. Uh, the progress button a bit up. Okay, uh, then the setting maybe a bit down. A bit more and then exit. A bit down. Okay, and then we can position the game history button in the correct spot. You can position it wherever you like. Okay, then we need to add uh, another scene. Let's go to the scene folder and then right click, create scene. And I will call it game history. Okay, so first of all, we need to add this game history to our build. So in the file, build settings, I will just grab this game history and drop it into this list. Okay, now we can close the file. Uh, close this window and then I will click on the game history button and then go to the on click event 
click this small plus, so to add another event, and I will drag and drop our main camera. And then from the function, select menu buttons, and then load, load scene, and I will load the game history. Okay, so this button should now load the game history scene. Let's see if it's working. So let's press play. And try to load it. Yes, we are in the game history, so that everything's working fine. Okay, stop the game. Open the game. Um, actually, first of all, let's click on the main camera, and then let's go to the background and copy this hexadecimal value. Okay. Now let's save this scene. And now let's open the game history scene. Click on the main camera. Click on this background and then paste this hexadecimal value in. Okay, so we have the same color. So first of all, inside this game history scene, we will add the canvas, so right-click, UI, canvas. Okay, and then under the canvas, I will right-click, UI, image, and I will call it title. Title, okay. I will position this image to on the Y position to be 278. Okay, so it's going to be right at the top. And then I will change the width and the height to be 372 by 70. Okay, and then let's go to our history folder. And then let's grab this uh, game history and then drag and drop it onto the source image. Okay. Let's change the scale uh, a bit, so it's going to be 0, 08, 0, 08. Okay, so it's nicely fit in the screen. So uh, about this width and the height, the numbers I took is exactly the size of this texture. So if you wonder why I put these numbers in, so this is the size of this of this image. So I just put the right size and then I scaled down, so I didn't lose the aspect ratio of this of the of this game history writing. Okay, let's save everything, so save. And now we need to add a few modifications to our script. So first of all, what we want to do, we want to store the game history, our game, under our uh, under our flag ini file, so uh, under our data file. So uh, in order to do that, we need to modify the config script. So let's open the Visual Studio. So scripts, and I will click, double click on the config file. Okay. So right at the top, right at the top, below the number of continents, I will add the history. Okay, and then let's create a few different variables. So first of all, be private, static, int, and this is going to be max history records. So this is how many records we want to store. We want to store six records. Uh, another will be private, static, har, char. So this is hi history divider. This divider will be used to uh, actually read back the information and write information to the file. So make sure you put one apostrophe, not two apostrophes, because this is the char and uh, put dot inside. Okay, and then we need to cre create um, another uh, class inside this class. So this class will be representing the data of the history which we want to store. So I put public class. You can uh, actually create class or structure. It doesn't really matter at this point because we're going to have a data only. So is, I'm going to call it last, last game result. Okay, and then the first member will be public, int, cor correct will be equal to zero. So this is uh, how many correct phalanx we have, public, int, total flags will be equal to zero, then another one will be public, String. 
game mode name. Will be equal to empty string and uh, one more public string continent name will be equal to empty string. Okay, so right below this uh, this class, I will create the instance of this class. So be public static list. So this list gonna be of our last game results. Okay, last game scores. But how I gonna call it? Uh, then uh, you need to initialize it. So new last game results. Okay, so we have our list. Then we need to create a function to actually update our list. So right below this uh, this setters, uh, sorry, this getters function, uh, we create uh, another function will be public static void and um, we call it update update last game score and we want to pass uh, the game settings dot e continent type and I will call it continent so we want to know what continent it is and then we want to pass the structure last game result. Continent game results. Okay. Okay. So this function will be called every time we finish the game to update our game score. So we will need a few different variables here. So first of all will be the continent name. But uh, we don't have uh, currently the function to get the continent type name out of this uh, continent type. So I will create one. So let's quickly go to our game settings. Okay. And then right at the bottom, I will create uh, another function public static string. And uh, this function will be called get continent type from from type, and we want to pass e continent type type, okay? And then now we do the switch uh, statement type, and we want to uh, switch on different continent type. So case e continent type dot Europe will be return you return Europe. Okay, I will duplicate it a few times. So the next one will be Asia. The next one will be Africa, then North America, South America, and then Oceania. Okay, so for the Asia, make sure it's a capital letter, so it's going to be Asia. For the Africa, will be Africa, then for the North America will be North America, I will not make any space in between, for the South America will be South America, South America, then for the Oceania will be Oceania, and then we need one more case statement, so in case the continent is not set, so we will select not set we will return not set okay so that's it for this function uh, it's actually not gonna be the case um, it's gonna be default okay so default and then we need to get apply that okay so in any other case 
we're gonna return not set. Okay, I'm gonna create uh, two more functions. So the first one will be public static static string get game mode get game mode mode name from type. So I will pass e game mode. So we want to know which mode we are in and we want to get the string out of it. So I will do the same switch type and then we need to uh, case uh, game mode dot short game return short game and then I will just duplicate this and the next one will be uh, survival survival and the last one will be time trade time trade and make sure you change this mode as well for the time trade and then on the last statement will be default we want to return not set okay and we need one more getter function so public static um, e game mode so we want to get game mode out of the our string so get get game mode type from string and we want to pass string string mode okay and then now we do the switch mode and then first one will be case and then for our game mode I will copy exactly the same names so I will they will match return game mode dot short game okay just duplicate it a few times the next one will be survival so we copy survival I'm just copying it because I don't want to make any spelling mistake so it will save me time later on when I'll be debugging the, uh, the problems okay time trail we will return the time trail and then by default we want to return game mode dot not set okay so that's it for this file we have our getter functions so let's save everything and now go back to our config file and go back to update last game score the function which we just created and then first of all we want to get the continent name of out of this continent type so i will put var continent name will be equal to game settings dot get continent type uh, should be continent name not type from type let's just modify this name uh, get continent name okay inside the game settings when we pass in the type let's change the name to get continent name from type that's what's supposed to be called let's save it go back and then we want to do get continent name from type and we want to pass this continent continent okay so we're gonna have our name in string format so now we want to get the last game score so we want to populate this list and i will use function insert not add because we want to insert the our recent record at the beginning of this list so we put zero here as a, which indicating i want to place it at the index zero so at the beginning and then i will put our game game results
Okay, and then I will call save score list. Save score list. So this function we already have implemented. Okay, so let's save everything. And now let's scroll down to our save scroll scroll list. In our script, save scroll list, we have this f statement, the long f statement. So let's collapse it, and let's collapse this else statement as well. So right before, after this else statement, uh, not here. Right when we closing the bra braces, before we closing the file, I will put the comment. Write game history. So we're gonna store our game history here. So int current current report index will be zero, and then I will use loop for each var record in last game score. So we want to loop through all of the records and then if current record index is less than the max history record so you want to store only the number which we specified here uh, that many records in the file we want to do the string record string and then record string will be equal to I will put h so we're gonna know which uh, which is that this is the history record plus current record index dot to string so we wanna we wanna store this value as well. So we know which which uh, which continent is in, uh, which record is in the in the list, and then uh, I will put uh, history history divider. So that dot which we specify at the top. Okay, press enter and then plus. So the next we want to store the uh, the game mode name. So record dot game mode name plus history divider. Then next line, record dot continent name plus plus history divider and then plus record dot correct dot to string plus history divider and then plus record dot total flags dot to string okay and then we can put the, the semicolon at the end so this is the string we're gonna combine all of the information from the record into the string and now we can write this string up to that to, the, to our file so writer dot write line and we want to pass our record string Okay, so we're going to store this information into our file. And then at the end, after the, we're closing the braces from, for that if, if statement, we want to increase the record index. Plus plus, okay? So that's it for, the, for saving our score list. Uh, now we want to implement the logic to read the scores in back from the file. So in our update score list, after this else statement where we uh, storing the four, okay, we want to press enter, and I will put uh, read history records, okay, and then we want to put the f statement. So if line, so we want to first of all check for this for this character if we are reading the history record. So if line on the index zero will be equal to make sure you put a single apostrophe hash and line on the index one will be equal to 
page. We want a reading back that line, so string. I will create a string array. Record line will be equal to line dot split. And we want to split the line by history divider. Okay. So this line will be exactly the same line as we as this record string which we stored. So we can read back everything in order. So we can read all of this information in order. So let's do that. So first of all, let's create last game record, uh, last game result. Record will be equal to new last game result. Okay, and then we can populate this record. So record dot game mode name will be equal to the game mode name will be at the index. So this is gonna be index zero up to the first divider. The second divider will be game mode name. Uh, so that's gonna be the second index, the third index, fourth and the fifth. Okay. So we can read uh, game mode. Uh, name so then it will be record record line at index one and then I will uh, do another record dot continent name will be equal to record line at index two record dot uh, actually we because those two those two um, names has been string from the record but now we need to read back the number so we can't simply just do the same we need to put if and then int dot try parse and then record line at index 3 and then we want to output it out to record dot correct okay so we want to try to read int from this record line from this uh, from this line from uh, at uh, index 3 to the directly to the record correct okay so if we are successful uh, actually if we are unsuccessfully so if equal to false we want to populate our record with value zero, okay? So if we can't read back this value, we're just gonna set it to zero, okay? And let's duplicate this line, and we wanna do the same, but we need to change this index to be four, and we wanna read, not the correct, but we wanna read the total, total flags, and if we are unsuccessfully read the total flag, we wanna set it to zero, okay? So this is how we're gonna read it. And then we need to, of course, add this information to our last record scores, so to our list. So last record scores dot add and then put record, okay? So we wanna populate our last record score, which is this, this list. Okay, so now we can store and read back the data from the file. We need to actually call this function, uh, the update last game score from somewhere in order to actually store our data. So I will open the survival lives class. And inside this class, right at the end, I will put another private function, private void, update, update game history, okay? And then inside this function, I will call config dot last game scores to be equal to 
uh, actually not last game scores it's gonna be last last game results okay would be equal to new config last game results uh, actually let's use these braces for construction doesn't really matter uh, and then game results dot correct would be equal to and then from here we want to get the scores how many scores we have so scores dot get current get current score okay then uh, another one would be game game results dot total flux will be equal to m underscore game data so we want to get the total number of the flags in the specific continent get flag get flag number we have this function already okay the next will be game results dot game mode name game mode name and we will use our newly created function from the game settings so game settings dot get game mode name from type okay and we want to pass our game mode name so i will call game settings again dot instance dot game mode name uh, sorry get game mode okay this function don't forget braces okay so we're going to read back the game mode and then the last one will be game results dot continent name will be equal to game settings dot get continent name from type and we want to call it game settings dot instance dot get continent type get continent type don't forget the braces okay so we have all of the information and then we want to update this information so we're going to call config dot update last game score so this function which we just created we want to pass the continent type so game settings dot instance dot get continent type and then we want to pass our game last game results so this is going to be last game results okay and th that's it for this function and then we want to call this function when we actually lose when we finish the game so if our lives is equal to zero in the remove lives function we're going to update the game's history okay so make sure you call this one here so that's it for the game uh, survival lives so let's copy this whole update game history function from here and then let's open the short game mode so when i do the same for the short game mode i will just scroll right at the bottom and i will paste this function in let's format it and i will copy the name of the function and we want to call this function inside our rotate method under the if should game finish we want to paste this game or update game history okay so when we finish the game we want to update the game history okay and then there is one more place where we need to use this function so let's copy this function again and then let's open the countdown timer okay scroll at the bottom and then let's paste this function in okay so we have this function in and then let's copy the update game history and i will put this function under the activated game over GUI. okay put this function in okay and there is one more fix which we actually need to do we need to remove the slip function because we don't really need it at this moment we don't want to pause the game at the end so i will just re remove this i enumerator from here and then we need to remove in our update function we need to remove start coroutine okay so make sure you do that otherwise the games the game history will be stored like multiple times so you have like a thousand of records in the file because it's going to be updated every every update sequence so we don't want to do that 
And then inside the on GUI method, we want to add another F statement right above this activate game over GUI. So if and GUI activated is equal to false. False. Only in this case we want to activate the game over. Okay? So we are making sure we're just updating our game history once, not multiple times. Okay? So let's save everything. And then let's switch back to the Unity and see if our data is actually stored correctly. So I will switch back to Unity. And let's go to the scenes, game, uh, main menu. Let's press play. We have our, uh, we have the compiler error. Okay, uh, I think uh, I have read some article on the internet um, regarding this issue. And it seems like this is the problem with the Unity. I have downloaded the latest version of the Unity and I have the older version as well. This is the older version. So in order to fix this issue, it seems like probably the fix will come soon. But uh, there is an issue. Just close this editor and then open it again. So close the whole editor and then open this project again. And this, pro uh, this uh, problem should go away. So I will do that. Okay, guys. So I have opened uh, the Unity again. That seems like the problem is still there. So as you see, there is a problem still, and my scene actually is not loaded. The the whole Unity is not loaded. So if you're facing the same issue, uh, I found a fix on the internet. Actually, I've been reading some articles about it. So here it is. The article which has a fix. So I propose the link in the description. So it seems like this is the problem with the Unity. Hopefully they're going to up, uh, update it soon. But um, in the meantime, uh, go to the to the description, click the link, and the answer by Amit Suri. You have uh, this, um, go to this location where you have your Unity installed. I will go to that location as well, but I have installed my Unity on my uh, on different drive, not on a C drive, but I have it on the D drive. So we have a custom location for it. I will show you where, how I'm gonna fix this issue. And, uh, but you can follow the same path and um, hopefully you'll be able to fix it as well. So I will go to my, to my desktop. And then uh, I will go to the D drive. You're gonna go to the C drive, obviously. Uh, then programs, Unity, then hub. So it's going to be Unity Hub. So we don't have a hub, but I will select the latest version of the Unity. So in my case, it's going to be version 2.11f. I think this is the latest version. So select the latest version as well. Then Editor. Then Data and find the tools, then Rosaline script, and then you have the Unity CSC bot. Just right click, and I will open in the Notepad++. You can open in the, in the Notepad if you wanna. Just need to open it in some, uh, some text editor. And then at the end of this Rosaline CSC, just put dot .exe. Okay, so I think they missed this one. Okay, and then save it. So as you see, don't pl place everything from here. They just do what the other guy suggested. So we just put the CSEXE and it's fixed it. So let's test it if uh, it's gonna fix in our case as well. So I will go to the Unity again. It doesn't work yet. So re let's close the Unity. Now we open it again. Okay. So as you see, something something happened. And it's just compiling all of the scripts again. I did not expect this issue to occur during this tutorial, but um, apparently it is. Okay, and... Um, our project is back again. So everything is great. So main menu. 
we have our games history scene. Everything seems to be fine. Okay, so now as we implemented all of the changes to our scripts, uh, let's test it if the data is actually saved in our file. So let's press play and then play. And then I will select Europe. Let's go with Quick Game Survival. Okay, one, three. So if you go back and stop the project, and then I will right click in the empty space and then show in the explorer. And then I will go one folder above, then flag in I will edit it in our in the notepad plus plus. We have our data. So scroll right at the bottom. And as you see, the survival game has been stored. So we guessed one flag out of uh, 51, but uh, we should have only one record, but for some reason it's just saved like six records of the same game. So this is not really correct, but we have all of our information. That's uh, the way we want it. Okay, so let's see why this one is actually happening like that. Okay, so I have found uh, I have found the issue inside um, inside the saving logic when we're saving the data to the file. So go to our scripts folder and open the config. And then inside our update score list, first of all, make sure you put the last game scores dot clear at the top. So this line wasn't there. So make sure you just you just put this line at the top. So we're gonna clear our data before we updating the list. And then inside our while loop, first of all, we're gonna delete this for statement. So for, I will just remove it. And then we we'll wanna remove one braces at the bottom. Okay. Okay, let's save it. So now, we have our app statement. Okay, press it. okay. So if we're reading the hash from the line, we just um, want to split by the dot, and then we we don't want to have this check either. So you can delete this app statement if line part or at zero is equal to i string. We don't want to have this one. So we remove this, and then we remove this basis as well. Okay. And then we're going to modify this score as this is a list. So instead of accessing directly to the element, we're going to press uh, add and we want to add the score. Okay. So we want to modify it here. We want to mo modify here. Okay. And then we want to modify. modify things here okay so everything everything now should work fine so make sure you're just adding this line here and then do the changes the same as it looks on the on my screen and then let's save everything go back to unity and then open the our data file again so we want to clear the data. So I will right click on this file and open with the notepad plus plus let's reload it and let's uh, right at the bottom. Let's remove all of these records which we saved and then save it. Okay. So now when we press play Europe survival Okay, let's go back, stop it, and then go back to that file, to our data file. Let's reload it. If you open in note of, uh, normal node, but you need to close the file and open again. And as you see, we just have a one line of our game, which is correct. So this is the correct behavior. Let's test another modes, if the another modes will output correctly. So I move this, this one, and let's test Let's say Africa, short game. So we have four out of nine. So nine wrong for correct, but total flux was 13. So let's bring back our 
our notepad and see we have our short game Africa right at the top 4 out of 54 because that many flags we have in the Africa continent so that's good seems to be okay so the last game which we want to test is the time trail so let's see Oceania and then time trail okay so I have found the issue in the game which has also been reported so I'll quickly show you what the, what the problem is so if you are in the game you press play you're going to Europe survival you're playing this this game till the end okay you're going back and you're going to the Oceania and you're selecting the time trail you see this uh, the message is showing like the the array is going out of the bound so this is pr the game is crashing at this point and it's not playable anymore so I will quickly show you how to fix it because it's very easy fix and something you can do straight away so let's go to our project and uh, open our uh, current game data script okay and right at the top uh, just find the awake function and uh, simply we need, we can just delete this awake method from from this class so the the thing so the script will be this uh, this game object will be destroyed whenever you're going back to the pick menu so i just delete this awake function and i will delete this uh, allowed on this uh, destroyed on load just let's quickly find where is where it's called so we're calling it in two different classes in the menu buttons and in the current game data so i'll just delete it from here because we don't need this variable any, any longer and uh, i will go to the menu buttons and on the load scene and clear data i will just delete this this variable as well because we don't need it okay let's save everything and let's go to the unity and to quickly test if this fix is work so now when you press play you're going to the europe survival let's reproduce the same steps okay let's go back and then when you start Oceania you can start the time trail and everything is working fine let's try to run different game mode different continent seems to be okay it's okay 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 seems to be working fine so just please do that and your game will not crash any longer you might have another issues as well with this game this is all because uh, because the game current game data has not been destroyed whenever you exit the the, the game okay as this video, video is getting uh, quite long now uh, i have decided to split actually this implementation into two different parts so uh, that's it for this part in the next part we're going to continue with the implementing our game history it shouldn't take too long now to have everything uh, ready so i hope you fixed all of the issue and uh, see you again in the next part